It is both, I think, proper and fitting that we come together today here at the East-West Center to express mahalo and aloha to our friend and mentor and colleague, John Van Dyke. While widely respected as a citizen of the world, John, I think, was very much and very particularly a Pacific person. He came to the University of Hawaii's law school in 1976, and Hawaii became his and his wife Sherry Broder's home. And Hawaii became the fulcrum around which his legal scholarship, academic and professional interests, and personal attachments were developed. From here, in Hawaii Nei, he reached out to an increasingly large community throughout the Asia Pacific region, serving as a fellow and also as an adjunct research associate right here at the East West Center for more than 20 years. During his long and productive relationship and association with the center, John collaborated with a variety of colleagues including Mark Valencia and Noah Ludwig. And he published three books here at the Center, Consensus and Confrontation, the U.S. and the Law of the Sea Convention in 1984, and International Navigation, Rocks and Shoals Ahead in 1986, and then in 1997, Sharing the Resources of the South China Sea. As has been mentioned by those who have spoken before me, John embodied the goals of the East-West Center in fostering mutual understanding and respect between and among the peoples of Asia, the Pacific, and the United States. <clears throat> and in fact, his good works heartened people far beyond. He focused his attention and legal acumen on issues of human rights and reconciliation, environmental justice, and the rule of law throughout the world. As a Pacific person, John championed the rights of the indigenous people of the Pacific, beginning with the Native Hawaiian community, whose members he so admired and so loved. He championed the law of the sea, of vast importance to the people of the Pacific, whose ocean covers more than one-third of the Earth's surface. And he championed the concept and the reality of peace. John was a Pacific gentleman in every respect. As Mari said, he could be very quiet but very strong. In thinking of him as a Pacific gentleman in every respect, I think of him being spacious in thought, generous in spirit, and committed to a more equitable, sustainable, and peaceful world. I believe at his core, John was a robust and articulate advocate for a more Pacific world. And I'm using Pacific not just in terms of its geographic orientation, but in his commitment to peace and justice across the globe. Sweet John, may we follow your lead.